notary has no obligation to to read uh, to, to to read uh, to read and uh, check very carefully of the contract what a mind fuck of epic proportions i got to say i just can't believe what i heard <laughs> And we are back with another edition of Real Estate Transactions in Ukraine's The Do's, The Don'ts, and The Red Light Risk Factors with our lawyer, Konstantin Bonar. Thanks, uh, Konstantin. Thank you. I can't help but ask how, like in our country, you can't do this. A lawyer cannot take cash, cannot take cash on a real estate transaction. It's forbidden by anti-money laundering uh, laws. How is it... Uh, how is it possible in Ukraine? Like how, how, we can't understand how it's possible. It's completely difficult to, uh, for government to control such kind of uh, transaction. As I say to you, as I say to you, uh, seller and buyer can uh, include every, uh, every amount of money in the contract. But in real life, then uh, can agree another sum of money. So that is a problem. Very interesting. Uh, totally different world here, guys, in the real estate world. I mean, uh, I did real estate transactions in Canada and US heavily for 20 years. So it's just like going to Mars. It's so strange here. Because of all the malarkey that goes on with these funny transactions and cash transactions and uh, slipping under the table and stuff like this. I've gone to great lengths to make sure my partners, my joint venture partners feel completely comfortable. So my partners wire transfer the funds to our trusted lawyers in Ukraine. They hold it in the escrow and they, when the transaction happens, uh, they transfer the funds directly from their trust account or escrow account to the seller. So you guys never have to worry about this kind of transaction happening when I'm involved in the transaction, but it just blows your mind what typically still happens today in Ukraine. So you're saying that the main risk in real estate transactions for foreigners is in some sort of fraud happening in the contract. That's the main risk to a foreigner yeah, buying real estate. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right now, yes. Yeah, I know a horrific story uh, of a foreigner that was embezzled um, out of about $150,000 with two flats. Um, so I interviewed Colin, who used to work uh, for me, his Australian bloke living in Sumi, and he told the story because it was his friend that got married, went to a notary, bought two condos at the same time, two flats at the same time. Uh, the document was not translated into English, it was only a verbal translation. Uh, so there was a translator, but it was only verbally done. And the translator said, translated that, yeah, you're buying this property together with your new wife. It was just a general translation, not a literal word by word trans translation. Uh, he bought the property. She then immediately filed for divorce. And lo and behold, when they looked at the contract, it clearly said in the contract, you are gifting one property to your wife and one property to your mother-in-law, the wife's mama. That's what the contract actually said. So the thing is, obviously, the notary was complicit, you know, that knew what was going on. I mean, obviously, I mean, notary got to read the contract, right? Right? Notary, uh, doing the transaction had, had to... Right. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's make truth, but there is no um, obligation for notary to check this contract. So that's why from the very beginning, I said to you, first of all, you need, fi uh, you need find out a uh, good trusted lawyer. Yes, because uh, under the legislation of Ukrainian notary has no obligation to, to read uh, to, to, to read uh, to read and uh, check very carefully of the contract. So the main ma main role of uh, our notaries is to check person who included in in the contract. Yes. Yeah? So if mother-in-law uh, was included in the contract, 
notary obligated only check this person who uh, who entered uh, in this agreement in this contract so that is the point what a mind fuck of epic proportions i gotta say i just can't believe what i heard the notary let me just repeat this because i'm still in complete shock and awe the notary who's representing the buyer and the seller on the on the conveyance on the transaction is not obligated does not have a fiduciary responsibility to act for the buyer and the seller to make sure the transaction happens properly and legally that's what you're saying not responsible uh you know i don't really agree with you that notary is a uh, is a representative of the parties not uh, notary this is the independent uh how to say the uh, notary mainly represent a state yes what you, a state? State, the state state ukraine the yes of course country so, so the notary yes. is, the notary is only responsible to make sure what you just said is that the the buyer is the person check the passport of course. and the seller is of check the course. passport and check check the contract that in passport uh, and the person who come the same are the same persons yes so this is the main uh, the main uh, Function. obligation okay. function of uh, of notary notary has no obligation to check uh, every uh, options of your contract so this is the work of your trusted lawyer does the lawyer have an obligation to make sure that the property is transferred from the seller to the buyer yes you're completely right uh, just a lawyer completely responsible for contest of your contract and if you take a good lawyer uh, trusted uh, professional uh, registered he, registered, registered. <laughs> he need to to um, to check your uh, your contract um, uh, Joe, <laughs> Joe. so the lawyer is responsible to make sure uh, proper legal conveyance or transfer from the seller to the buyer. He's yes, responsible. Yes, yes, he's responsible. Thank so God. Not, not, so not, not a notary. Not a notary. Okay, I'm glad we got that clear. Uh, I, I was uh, going to head for the hills if nobody was responsible because that would have been catastrophic. Okay, okay, lawyer saved the day here. So back to uh, Colin's friend's case of his wife that uh, duped him out of two flats. Um, the the translator was in on it with the wife, obviously, and the notary had no fiduciary responsibility for the conveyance. So there you go, guys. This is a case in point. Your biggest risk is in the notary uh, office to make sure that the contract is fair, you understand the contract, and it's translated pro into proper legal English. One last thing, Constantine, about realtors. Are realtors required to be licensed? Is there a license for realtors in Ukraine or anybody can be a realtor? Under the, our legislation, there is, uh, there is no obligation for some person to be, uh, to be a realtor and uh, have some, some license. So anybody can be a realtor, no license yeah, required yeah, in Ukraine? Yeah, yeah. I understand they're changing that right now that in the very near future there will be licensing requirement similar to a notary yeah yeah it's uh, it's true but uh, nobody knows uh, when uh, when it's happened interesting points guys so you see the realtor has no fiduciary responsibility to the buyer the seller you can see no protection at that level no protection at the notary level only at the lawyer level so i think um, constantine thank you very much i think we've nailed down on the process of real estate transactions in Ukraine, the risk factors um, so that we can protect ourselves as foreign buyers of real estate, because I think there's a lot of great opportunity uh, in Ukraine right now for acquiring real estate for a long-term hold. And in terms of an international valuation, uh, I think it's some of the cheapest real estate I've seen, waterfront property in Ukraine. So thank you very much, Constantine. Thank you. It's been a very extensive, even exhaustive uh, interview on real estate transactions in Ukraine, the do's, the don'ts, the risk factors, and uh, just understanding how the conveyance and cash transfer process happens here in Ukraine. So thanks again, and uh, 
good luck on your real estate deals in Ukraine. Hi, my name is Barry McGuire. I'm a partner in an Edmonton law firm. I've been practicing law for 37 years. I'm a real estate educator. I'm also a real estate investor for over 39 years. And today I, I would like to just talk to you a little bit about the best wealth creating strategy that I know about in real estate. And that strategy is multifamily syndication. Over the years, in, in my 37 years of practicing law, I have seen every kind of real estate deal come across my desk. All different styles, all different setups, everything. And my most successful clients, my wealthiest clients, are all multifamily syndicators. That is the very best way to make money in real estate, and I truly believe that. So, if you want to learn about multifamily syndication, you can certainly learn on your own. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of money, you're gonna make a lot of mistakes. And as I said, I'm a real estate educator, so I'm, I am tuned in to who is teaching what across this country, and I don't know of anyone else who is teaching you how to do multifamily syndication at this point in time. There just isn't anybody else across the country who's doing it except Joe Ricards. As I said, 37 years in the law game, I've had lots of real estate clients. Joe knows more about real estate than any other client I've ever had. Uh, in, our, in our latest transaction, he constantly surprised me with his intimate knowledge of how real estate works, including into the legal concepts. And it's not just a little bit more than my other clients, he knows a lot more than my clients. So he's an extremely knowledgeable investor on the real estate side of things. The second thing is, is diligence. Everyone says you have to do your due diligence. But you know, what, does that, what does that really mean? You have to understand what diligence items you have to do, what you want to discover about a property, and then what you do with the information that you get. Joe did not leave a stone unturned. There was many a time on this recent transaction where I'd say, Joe, what about the, and then I would name a diligence item. Joe already had it covered. So he understands diligence and how important it is, and he really, really gets it done. That's number two. And then the, the third thing is protection. And on the protection side, what I, what I mean when I say that is that Joe is extremely concerned about transparency and disclosure in real estate transactions. He wants to make sure that everybody involved in the deal knows exactly what is going on. And I have to tell you that that is rare in, in real estate investors. Some of them just maybe, you know, they just don't want to tell the truth all the time. Joe wants to tell the truth. He wants full disclosure. He wants to be fully transparent and he knows what that, what that means is that a, an approach like that, that particular approach means that his clients and his investors are absolutely fully protected, which I really take to heart and I really enjoyed that in working with Joe. So folks, I recommend Joe Ricards. Hi, I'm Rick Letting. I'm a lawyer and I practice in Vancouver, British Columbia. And I've done a number of deals with uh, Joe Ricards, probably countless deals with Joe Ricards over the years. And I've uh, found Joe to always be a very diligent performer when it comes to creative deals. As a matter of fact, at one point in time, I actually said to Joe that if he was a lawyer or a licensed lawyer, that I would certainly probably hire him because of his uh, due diligence. Uh, he's very thorough with the way he uh, examines and analyzes deals. And I, um, I've also found him to be quite a good creative uh, deal maker. He's done countless deals over the years and he's always very, very creative, very analytical. Um, I would say that uh, I would highly recommend him if if anybody ever came to me and said that they were planning on doing some form of a joint venture deal with them, I would, I would highly recommend that that would probably be a good thing for them to do. And I would certainly follow Joe's lead, you know, because he's got a good sense of uh, where a deal's going and he's got some good experience.